Hello, today I want to talk about the Promax RG5410EX. Um, problem is not uh, generally related to this specific model, but this is the one that I have. And I got a call the other day from one of our members that was saying he's having an issue recovering and that the tank would get to about 80, 85 PSI and, and it just didn't seem like it was recovering anymore. Um, one of the things you could do is put your recovery tank in ice, but that's not always something you can do in a customer's home. But it got me thinking, you know, how do these things work? What, what, what goes on inside of them? What, what makes them so mysterious? You just got this box and it takes a Freon out and you really don't know what's going on inside. And I, and I started to do some tests on my own just to see, um, you know, how well does mine work? So here is uh, the uh, face of the recovery machine. Um, it has an in and an out. So your appliance that you're recovering a Freon would be connected to the inlet here. And the outlet over here would be where your recovery tank goes. Uh, basically, we just open up vapor, vapor open up the, the discharge port and put it on recover. Uh, we turn it on and press start and it goes. Um, so what was happening with the machine? I said, let me test my unit out. I asked him, uh, is your unit pulling a 30 inch vacuum? If you look right here, here's zero PSI and everything to the right is pounds per square inch gauge, but everything to the, to the, from zero to 30 here, this is the vacuum level. On your gauges, they call that a compound gauge because it reads pressures and vacuums. They're not exactly the same thing. Um, so let me fix this thing. I just realized I misspelled it. But testing the pulling capacity of the unit, I was only able to pull about a 20-inch vacuum. Now, I was not even pulling from an appliance. I had this blue hose connected directly to the gauges just blurred out here at the bottom right-hand corner. And I'm just pulling on a hose. This thing should pull the 30 within minutes. And I was like, okay, we, we, we have an issue here. Uh, so I was like, well, a few years ago, one of my students realized the recovery machine, this same recovery machine wasn't working and we took it apart and he was able to get a few seals and rebuild it. But I said, okay, well, maybe since he took it apart and rebuilt it, maybe something came loose inside. Let me check it out. So I went ahead and opened up the, the unit. Uh, I'll just identify some of the components here. Down here, I just wrote power, but I was going to start to put uh, the words on everything, and I just thought that was just way too much. So let me just move this out of the way. And let's look at this picture first. Um, if you look at it, we have... A motor looks very similar to almost like a trash compactor motor like a Whirlpool trash compactor or an old dishwasher motor and then this black portion that's attached to it is it's a coupling in there I'll let you see a closer look later this is the actual pump okay here the coils on the back they're the same thing as a condensing coil and a fan like your your condenser so imagine this pump being like a compressor these coils being like your condenser so as it sucks the refrigerant out, it pumps it into this uh, condenser here and cools it down and tries to convert it to liquid instead of vapor. So when we pump it into the tank, it doesn't take up as much space in the tank. When you first do that though, if your tank's empty, as soon as it enters the tank, it's gonna be like an evaporator. The Freon's just gonna turn to vapor. And over a period of time, if the temperature's not too hot, you should be able to pull it down. So um, this is our centrifugal switch here. And you can see a capacitor on the top, and this is also a capacitor here. Um, this little device right here, and I'm going to highlight it, this is a pressure control right here. This is connected to the inlet, and I don't know whether it's high or low pressure, but it is a pressure control. And um, if the unit exceeds too much pressure and it's not pumping as a safety device, this unit will cut the machine off. So let's take a look at the, uh, at the other picture bring this to the front this is the other side of the recovery machine you can see the the pump system just a little bit better this is the top of the pump and this is actually 
um, part of our, our discharge. Now if you look here we have another pressure control here and we have another refrigerant line in here. So this here is going to be our pressure or outlet going out of the recovery machine. So we have pressure controls on both sides of the system. You can see the other one just hidden behind here. Um, and we have two capacitors. The reason why we have two capacitors is that um, this unit has both a run and a start cap capacitor. Remember that we're trying to pump down refrigerant and to compress it. If there's slight refrigerant inside the system, we try to start it up. It's going to be very hard for the motor to start the pump. So we have these capacitors in there. One to help start it and the other one is to help keep it smooth running. Now also there's another pressure control switch right above this capacitor right here. So I'm going to highlight all the pressure control switches. One, two, three. Now most of them, I didn't test them, but most of them would be uh, normally closed and then when the pressure comes into the contact with them, if it exceeds a certain amount of pressure, uh, it will open up a contact and just cut the unit off. So this is the inside of the system. So I opened it up thinking, okay, well maybe one of these flared fittings here, one, two, we have fittings all around. Uh, if we go to the other picture here, um, bring to front. If we look at the other picture here, we, we have more fittings here, here, some more fittings here. So I was assuming, okay, if I'm not able to pull the proper vacuum, and this unit's been worked on, maybe something vibrated loose, one of these fittings, and let me just go in there, open it up, tighten everything down with a wrench. I went ahead and just tightened all of the flare fittings down and turned the unit back on again to see if it was able to pull a 30 inch vacuum and the unit just wasn't capable of doing it. So, I decided, just like a refrigerator, if you're going to do a sealed system job, change a compressor, dryer filter, or something like that, you want to pressure test it to make sure it doesn't have any leaks. Uh, since this is more like a condensing unit and not a uh, evaporator, normally we tell you if you're going to pressure test a refrigerator for leaks, you don't want to exceed um, 100 psi just for safety reasons because the evaporator and the refrigerator is made of aluminum and could get damaged. But this unit here, uh, I put it, here it says about 140, uh, my gauges, uh, uh, my, re, re, um, excuse my tongue here, uh, my, my gauges on my nitrogen tank tell me that I'm set to about 150, 160 PSI, and I went only to about 130, 140 on my machine, and I started soaping all my fittings. So all I have is just the hose connected. When I checked it to see if it pulled a vacuum, I had this very same hose connected to these gauges here. So when I was pulling a vacuum, it should have pulled a vacuum within a minute. It shouldn't have taken that long. And I just couldn't get it down below 20, which is the same that one of our uh, members are having. So, so here's a video of the unit as I was just checking for the leak and it was a little hard for me to put my ear there and actually hear where the leak was coming from. So sometimes when the leak is happening you can just hear it hissing in the background. One second, one second. What what will happen is if you put your finger over a portion here for example if it was leaking you'd hear the hissing noise change sound. So that didn't work for me. I thought I could, you know, feel around for it or hear, hear it change sound as I uh, put my finger on it. So now I started soaping all my fittings just to see if any of them leaked. So you see I was putting a little bit of soap fitting on all of them. I was trying not to get too much of my electrical soaking wet. But it sounded like it was coming from this pump assembly here somewhere. And I had already tightened all my fittings, and none of them seemed like they were leaking. Then I stuck my finger there. Listen to this. I'm going to replay it. Listen if you can hear the change of the hissing noise as I stick my finger inside where this pump is. So this is where the motor is connected to the pump. It's almost like a direct drive. It was very slight. I don't know if you, if you were able to catch it. 
but it seems like it was coming from inside. The so as I brought the camera closer, you can probably hear the hissing a lot better. Look right in this area, you're going to see where it's leaking on the shaft of the pump. That basically meant my rotating shaft seals here on the pump are gone. Um, I forgot to mention that when I was pulling a vacuum on the unit, let me go back to my um, presentation. When I was doing the vacuum here and trying to get a 30 inch vacuum, I just had a hose connected right to the gauge and the valve was closed. So we're only evacuating a three foot hose. As I was running this unit, I forgot to mention the other thing that I noticed. I would put my hand here by the outlet and I kept feeling air like it's coming out. And when you first turn it on, it'd be all right to feel air. But after about 20, 30 seconds, that's it. There should be no more air in this hose. It just kept pumping air. So I had closed this valve. And when I closed it, I started watching my high side gauge go up. It went as high as 100 PSI. Remember, in this picture, I do not have nitrogen in here. I'm just pulling a vacuum to see if this unit's capable of pulling a decent vacuum. And when I did that, I'm getting pressure coming here, which means the pump was sucking in air from that leak that I showed you with the soap test. So I did a little research on the internet and found out that this unit has a parts breakdown. And basically here are all the parts for this recovery machine if I needed to repair it and the one of the most important was number eight number eight is the whole pump assembly where that's all I need to replace now a new recovery machine is about four to five hundred dollars and when I did some research this pump was about two hundred and seventy dollars so most people I'm gonna tell you I wouldn't invest the kind of money into a recovery machine that may be at least six to eight years old that had a lot of use um, I, I wouldn't do that but as I did a little bit further research I found that they have a seal kit that you can take the pump apart and you can repair it and that's only 73 bucks plus seven dollars shipping where that's about 80 bucks that's worth it for a five hundred dollar machine to get it working uh, which I'm going to uh, order this kit and I'll take the pump apart and rebuild it and show you guys how I rebuild it um, I'll have to do that not next week but the week after is uh, going out of town to Atlanta uh, for a skills USA competition with one of my students uh, one day I will go ahead and live stream some of the competition so you guys can see what a appliance repair competition would look like and this is the national one, so wish me luck or wish my student luck. Yeah, look, ho look forward to bringing back a medal. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, and I will do a follow-up video when I return. Hopefully by then this kit will arrive, and uh, I'll, I'll get it tore down, and I'll do a quick video of tearing it down and rebuilding it, and I'll be replacing the seals and the bearings on the unit. Have a great one.